Hi, my name is Bob Moore. I am a developer and VP of uh, mobile for Alpha Software. And today I'm going to bring you through a tutorial and we're going to show you how to build this, this full mobile application. Uh, with Alpha you can build both uh, desktop web apps and mobile apps, but in this tutorial we're going to focus on mobile app development. And the thing that's unique about this tutorial is I'm going to bring you th right through this from ground zero um, and we are going to be doing a direct comparison to a, a tutorial that Apple has developed uh, to teach new people how to use Swift UI. Uh, and this, we're using actually the exact same data, the exact same pictures, and we'll actually be able to see what's the difference between developing uh, a native iOS app with Swift UI and developing that exact same app with Alpha Anywhere. So if you're interested, you can go to um, developer.apple.com slash tutorials slash Swift UI. And this is the actual uh, tutorial that we're going to be uh, going through. We're going to be go going through the first chapter, essentially, of this tutorial. And let me show you it actually running in Xcode, so you, we can see this is a this, so this is uh, uh, using a uh, an, a simulator uh, in Xcode, and uh, and let's take a look at what it does. So it it shows our list of uh, of landmarks, and it has a filter which we can turn on and off that will show us our favorites or all our different uh, parks. And when we tap on a row in the list, brings up a nice looking. Um, detail view. It's got a map that scrolls independently. Uh, the lat long is, uh, it, the map is centered on the lat long. Uh, we're going to put a marker in our map. Nice uh, image here. It's got a, a white border with a drop shadow all around. And uh, then we've got some uh, information about the park. This is filler text in the, uh, in the data source, but uh, you get the idea. And the whole panel scrolls and the, the map scrolls independently. Also notice there's a star. If I tap on that, we'll make it a favorite. Come on back over here and you can see now Lake McDonald is one of our favorites. I scroll this. I can say, okay, show me only my favorites. And there they are. Now, let's take a look at that same thing in Alpha. So here we've got a, the iPhone uh, six showing. Um, I can't quite fit it on the full screen here and, and fit it within the uh, confines of the video, but uh, you get the idea. I can filter the list, only show my favorites. I can click on a row, and I've got a map, and we drop a marker in there so you can see where that is. You can scroll that independently. Uh, we can scroll this panel independently of the map. And then uh, we've got the exact same layout here. And I can set my favorites. So if Turtle Rock was a favorite. And now when I come on back, it no longer is a favorite. Uh, and let's go just take a look at another one. Let's see the map centers appropriately. Twin Lake. And so on. So we're going to bring you through exactly what it takes to build this app from ground zero. Okay, to build the project, let's launch Alpha Anywhere. And in this case, I'm going to create a new empty workspace. So we'll use this workspace to contain all the different tutorial projects we might want to uh, uh, create. Uh, you can give it a name. In this case, we'll just call it Tutorials. And I'm going to locate this in a folder I already have on my C drive called workspaces. So just an easy way to uh, to get to this. <clears throat> so the workspace name is tutorials and it's going to be in the workspaces directory on my C drive. Click on OK. Uh, you can click OK here. This will open the web uh, control panel when the workspace is opened, which is what we want to do. And so now we've really got a, a blank slate. Uh, the first thing you'll notice up here, the default uh, uh, project is, is loaded. And what I want to do is create a new project. I always like to give my projects, you know, some name that I can work with. So in this case, we'll call this Landmarks. And we'll call it Landmarks 1 because we'll probably do more than one of these projects. 
And I don't need a Git repo in this case. Start with an empty project and that's all we need to do. And you'll notice that this changes here. So now if you click on this uh, little button here, you'll see you have both a default project and a Landmarks 1 project. That's the one we're going to work with. Now from here, we need to set some properties up for this project. Don't necessarily want the default. So the project style by default is alpha. I'm going to change that. I'm going to pick a version, an iOS theme that works well for this. So we'll pick this iOS 7 uh, theme. And the next thing I need to change uh, has to do with some JavaScript libraries that are going to load by default. So you, we, we do not need jQuery in this project. So we'll say, no, we don't need that. We certainly don't need jQuery UI. And the only other thing that we need to add is you're going to need a, to add a key for Google Maps because we're going to be using Google Maps in this project. And uh, you'll see there's a Google Maps API key and a Google Static Maps API key. I use the same, and I always just enter that in right here. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, go to uh, Google Maps to, uh, to get that API key. And the way you can do that, let me just go ahead and save that. Um, the way you can do that, if you go up into Help and open documentation and do a search on, uh, say, Google Maps, API key, uh, you'll get a, a listing. So getting a Google Maps JavaScript API key, that's what we're interested in. This whole article just bring you through the whole thing. So once you have that, save it uh, in a note or something like that, and then you, you'll paste that into your project properties. Okay, so once that's done, uh, we need to add some assets to this uh, project. And uh, the assets are included in a, a folder um, that is available in the uh, uh, comment section about this video. It'll be a zip file that you'll want to, uh, to download, and it's going to be called Landmarks Underbar Chapter 1 Underbar Assets.zip. Uh, and once again, that link will be in the video description. So uh, when you do that, an easy way to add all of these assets to this project, and by far the easiest way, I think, is you click, if you click on this um, icon here, it's going to open the project folder up in Windows Explorer. So go ahead and do that. And now we're, we're just in, in Explorer, and now we can do anything we want. So in my case, I've, got, I've already got this file on my machine. It's in... Um, a tutorials folder, but you'll have to download it, and it's going to be uh, Landmarks uh, Chapter One Assets.zip. So let's go go ahead and uh, and copy that. And now I'm just going to go back, back, and now I'm back into my uh, Landmarks One web project. I can see that up here, Workspaces Tutorials, uh, Landmarks One's web web project, and just I'm just going to right click and paste. So now I've got the zip file in here. And now I'll right click on it and we'll just say extract all. Now by default, it wants to put all of these assets into a folder called the same name as the, the folder with the zip file, but I don't want that. So I'm just going to back this up here because I just want to put it in the root of the, uh, the web project there and say extract and that's all set. So now my structure looks like this. I've got a folder for some CSS. So there's a, a style tweaks that I've done and there's some CSS here that we can look at. Uh, but that's gonna, we're gonna be referencing that in the, in the project. There is an images folder that's got all these different images we're gonna use. There is uh, a JavaScript um, file in here that we're going to be using also i don't want to have to type out all of the javascript i'm going to use so we'll just load that in and uh let's see then there's a license folder this is uh, apple's uh, license information uh, a lot of the assets came from apple because we're using the uh, swift ui tutorial that they put together and uh and they say that we can use this free of charge we just have to make sure that we reference apple in in here and we do so Right now, we could go ahead and delete this uh, zip file here, so we can just delete that. That's fine. And uh, right now, we are all set. So you could go ahead and now just close this out, this uh, Explorer window. And now we can see in Alpha, we've got all these different uh, folders, and it's set up the way 
we would like. Okay, um, notice over on the left side with the uh, A5W pages is highlighted. I'm going to look at all files. So let's click on all files. And now I can see the data source for our project, and that is landmarks.json. I'm going to just um, double click on that so that we can take a look at it. In this case, it brought up one of my uh, editors. And uh, so we can see it's a JSON structure. You know, this could typically be included. It could be downloaded. Uh, most uh, APIs will send back JSON data. So it's, it's a very common uh, structure. And you can see we've got uh, the name and the category and city state and, and so on coordinates for longitude and latitude. And uh, we can reference an image name in here. So this is going to be our data source for our list control. It will be adding to the project. Okay, we're going to start uh, building our application by creating a new UX component. So uh, you can do that a couple of ways. Uh, you can click on this new button up here and say that you want to do a web component. Double click on that and pick UX. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, a little shortcut, is right here. Um, by default, when you first fire it up, it's going to create an A5W page. Uh, but in this case, we want to create a UX component, so that's just a little shortcut to do that. And we can start with a blank component. Once that's done, we have a, a, essentially a blank sheet. And uh, over on the left-hand side, you'll notice under UX, you have controls, properties, data binding, server-side and client-side events. Uh, different handlers you might want to use, JavaScript functions, JavaScript actions. There's a lot, a lot of different uh, controls here. And then we get into data controls and panels and containers and so on and so forth. Um, but one that a lot of people skip is this information one. So this is kind of nice because here you can, you can enter in a description of what your component is. And I like to use this comment section here to make little notes, like maybe things that I need to uh, add or just little things about the component itself. So this is a nice little thing to know about, and, uh, and it's, I think it can be very, very useful. Okay, I'm going to go back to controls, and we're going to start out by entering uh, a couple of panel cards. So those panel cards are going to be the, you know, the basis of the, of the UI for our mobile application. So go under panels. And uh, we'll pick a panel card, and we're going to insert the opening and closing panel card, and, and that comes in. Um, I'll enter in another uh, panel card as well, because we're going to have two in this uh, one. And we'll say insert after that. Actually, let me bump that down. These two, I want to bump down to here. So I've got panel card one. I've got the closing tag for panel card one up here and the opening and closing for panel card two. And then I'm going to highlight all of this. And now I'm going to put in a panel navigator and we'll just insert that here. So the panel navigator encompasses panel card one and panel card two. And by default, the panel navigator, this is the way we're going to navigate between the different panel cards, is set up for a carousel. So you could literally just run it right now and, and you could swipe between these. The problem is there's nothing on these panel cards, so we wouldn't really be able to differentiate, well, which one's panel card one and which one's panel card two. So let's just do something quick. We'll just, um, we'll add a background color. So we can go to the panel uh, body style and let's just go into, uh, let's just say the, the uh, background color is going to be, and we'll just pick a color here. So let's pick like a light blue. Say OK. And um, let's go. F so that's our first panel card. And our second panel card, let's go ahead and, and set that panel card background color to, say, a, a sort of a yellow of some sort. OK. So now we have something to differentiate the two different panel cards. Next, I'm going to go ahead and check this mobile box because we're, we want to, we're building a mobile app. And we want to see a mobile simulator when we go to run this thing. And now I'm just going to click on Working Preview. And now we can see there's our panel card one in blue. And if I swipe it, 
you can see the yellow panel card comes in, into play. So with the panel navigator, the, na the uh, default behavior is a carousel. We're going to change that because we're going to make this programmatic. But you can see we've got the two different panel cards there. That's running in working preview. Notice the UX right now is untitled. So this is a good time to save it. You can just go ahead and save, and let's just call this uh, Landmarks. For our component, then we're done. So now we're working with the Landmarks component, and we've got uh, the panel card set up. We've got the panel card navigator set up, uh, and we're ready to add some more controls to these panel cards. Okay, at this point, I'm going to change the names of these panel cards so that they more reflect what the content really is. So uh, panel card one, let's change the name of panel card one to, um, let's call that Landmarks panel card. And let's change the panel card two to and we'll just call it details panel card okay you know it's just easier to keep track of things and especially as if things get more and more complicated um, I just think you know using this kind of labeling makes sense I'm gonna change the panel navigator also from a carousel uh, I'm gonna change the behavior see the navigator type right here I'm gonna change that to programmatic so what we're going to be able to do is be able to bring the detail view into view uh, when somebody taps on a row in the list that's the way we're going to do that now if we take a look at the uh, swift ui application let's bring that in over here and look at the structure here we see this would be panel card one and there's a title here called landmarks now we see there's a favorites only switch here and then a list. So we'll start out by adding a, a panel card header that will have the landmarks text in it. And then we'll be adding a list that will populate with data. So I'm going to select the panel card. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say I want to add a uh, panel header and it asks me if I'd like to include a control bar in the panel header. That's another type of control. I don't need that here because I really just need to enter in some static text. So I'll say no. And now we see another container comes in. This is the panel card header. And well, I'm going to highlight the, uh, the first panel card header tag. I'm going to go ahead into and click on other controls here. In this case, I really just want to put in some static text and the static text you could enter in any html you wanted here but we're not going to worry about the styling right now so we'll just type in landmarks and click ok and so now we've got landmarks that will be left justified in the panel card header and uh, on the panel card itself i'm going to go ahead and turn this background color uh, we'll just get rid of that and we'll go with the default style for right now and now if we were to click on working preview we should see landmarks in the panel card header and we do so that's exactly what we wanted and next what we're going to do is install and in, include the list control in this panel card i'm going to go ahead and click on the design tab again at this point it's probably a good time to save uh, your work just click the save button up here and uh, you're all set so now what we want to do is add a list control to uh, the landmarks panel card so and we want it under the header so i'm going to highlight the header and i'm going to go next we're going to insert a data control so this is a list control and uh, this is a, a comprehensive control but let's go ahead and just enter that in let's call it um, landmarks Uh, the label we actually don't even need to worry about um, we could make it the same well we probably should but in this case we're not going to even use the uh, the label there won't be a, uh, a label uh, displayed 
So uh, we should be all set here. And now our list control comes in. Over on the right side here, we'll see the properties for the list control. So if I go between any, you know, different uh, controls, I see the properties for that given control. So here we've got the landmarks list. And the first thing we want to do is we want to fill the container. So in this case, it's going to fill all that's left of this panel card with this list. And to set the data source, we'll go into the list properties, click on that, and uh, our data source by default is static data. In our case, we want to consume the data from a JSON file. So now we just need to specify the file name. And uh, let's select a file. And our file is landmarks.json. Open that up. Okay. And that is now our data source. If we go in, click on the fields tab, we can see all the fields in uh, this uh, data source in the JSON file. So we see name, category, city, state, ID, uh, is featured, is favorite, park, coordinates, uh, description, and image name there. If I now go into the list properties, I can see uh, a lot of different properties in here. Uh, and we'll come back to that actually in just a second because we're going to set the, uh, the detail view up that will be on panel card two. Uh, let's see, do I need to make any changes here? Uh, drag, scroll. I really only am going to go be dragging in the uh, Y axis direction. So I like to set that up uh, appropriately. And I don't think I need to uh, change. Uh, oh, the layout type does need to change from a, uh, column layout type. We're going to go to a freeform uh, layout type. Uh, we'll be defining a template to display the uh, the information. And I think that's about all we're going to need right now. So we'll say OK there. That says I haven't defined a template. Oh, yes, of course I haven't defined a template. Let's go ahead and do that in our list layout. Um, Let's take a look. So is, this is like, what do we want the, 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 the data to look like in this list itself? So let's go take a look at a predefined template and see if we can see something that's sort of close to what we want. And what we want uh, looks like this. So we see an image over here and uh, the name of the landmark, uh, disclosure uh, icon over here, and then we've got a star if the list is our favorite or not. So this is another image. So let's see if we can find something that's sort of close to that. Uh, let me go ahead and move this over. And let's see what we have that's, that's close to what I want. So um, I think this is, this is pretty close to it. Um, and we can go ahead, well, this might even be a li little closer. So let's go, go ahead and just grab that and say we do want an image on the left. And that'll show up there. And a disclosure icon on the right. And what disclosure icon do we want to use? You could say a subtle icon. Um, or you, could, you can use or define it. Uh, we, we may tweak that. So, we'll, But this is okay. We're just going for a, uh, a template that we... That makes some sense to us at this point. So we'll say, OK, because we can modify all of that. And level one and level two, these are your template placeholders. So our level one template placeholder is name. And level two template placeholder is is favorite. And we'll say OK. And in this case, just say OK. And now we can click on working preview. And let's take a look at what we have. So we can see there is an image, although we haven't identified what it is. There's the name of the landmark. And we're seeing true and false along with the disclosure icon. So this, you know, this is pretty good. I mean, right out of the shoe, we've got something that, that we can work with. Now, obviously, we need to tweak this. But, uh, but we've got something that works, and it scrolls. And of course, if I tap on a row, it'll highlight the row. But it doesn't do anything yet. So we'll, we'll, we'll be making some changes to this to... Uh, 
uh, bring this to life. Okay, next we're going to uh, modify the template so that we can see the image. So let's um, <clears throat> click on the Design tab and into List Properties and go to List Layout. And here, it, this, on this line, you can see where the image is being set, the image source is being set. So let's go ahead and change this image source. And we're going to drop in a, uh, a template placeholder. And we're going to use the data because we don't want the string. We want the actual picture. Uh, data image name. So just double click on that. It will insert that. And I'm going to go ahead and set the width here. And we'll set the width uh, equal to uh, 50 pixels. That should be fine. And that's all we need to do there. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And let's go take a look at working preview and see how that worked out. Well, that looks pretty good. So now we see the image for the different landmarks. Um, and the next thing we need to do here is change the true or false. If it's true, we want to see a gold star. If it's false, we don't want to see anything there. So uh, we need to put a, a, uh, an image in there based on some kind of condition, right? So, so let's go in and edit the template. Go into Design. Go back into our List Properties. Go into our List Layout. Okay, so when we look at this template and we're looking for Is Favorite, so we see Is Favorite is on this line right here. So name and is favorite is this is the one that floats to the right. So this is the line that we're going to modify um, and put a conditional in there so that if is favorite equals true, we're going to display the star. So I'm going to go ahead and just move things around here a little bit. Let me just go ahead and cut that and I'm going to paste it down here just to make things a little clearer in my own mind. This organization at this point doesn't really matter all that much, but sometimes it just makes it easier, uh, you know, to keep things clear in your own head. So what I'm going to do here is I don't really need this class at all. It's just mucking things up. I don't need it. And if I do find that I need the class, I'll add my own in. Um, because all we're going to do is display that, uh, that star image. We do want to float it right. And then we want conditional logic logic in here instead of just having this placeholder text. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to drop this div down just so I can make this a little bit clearer. Again, in my own, in my own mind, I just want to make it easy for me to read. And what I'm going to do is now we're going to, I'm going to insert some text uh, that will contain the, the essentially the templating language that I need. Um, in order to do what we need to do. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just paste this in so you don't have to watch me type it. But what we're saying here, so we start with a curly brace and a star. And now if is a is favorite equals true. So this is just like JavaScript here. If is favorite equals true, then image source is going to be from our images folder, the, the gold underbar star underbar 16. Uh, px.png and then we close that all off with an end if tag that's all you need to do there i'm going to go ahead and say okay and we'll go and look at working preview and see how that looks ah, and that's getting pretty close we see the star is not aligned really the way i'd like it so with css i'm going to have to uh, make some changes there uh, the uh, alignment here with the name is a little bit off, the uh, this disclosure icon here is the wrong color. I want it to be a gray. If we if we go back to uh, the landmarks, uh, the sample app, we can see, uh, yeah, we want that centered and we want this to look gray and so on. But these are just CSS things that we just need to uh, to clean up, and that and that's actually quite simple. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to save this component. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close it. And I'm going to make a copy of this component because I like to keep these different component phases um, 
stored so that I can always get back to them. So in other words, if I just right click on this and I select duplicate and I have the landmarks.a5 component, I'm going to say this is landmarks under bar and I'm just going to put in uh, phase one. And it, so it's just it's just saving in a known state so that whenever I go back, if I mess something up or whatever, I've got this duplicate um, component, but I know exactly what state it's in. So I'll continue to edit the landmarks component, but I can always get back to this one if I really mess things up. Okay, moving forward, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the landmarks component again and bring up the, uh, the builder here, the UX builder. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a custom CSS style to this component. Uh, and I'm going to do that by including the file. So go to Properties. And you, it's easiest to just search for some of these properties because there's so many of them. So in this case, I want to look, uh, I'm looking for linked because uh, I want to link in some CSS. And you can see you can link in CSS, SVG, JavaScript, Rex Basic. But I want CSS, so that's fine. Leave that. It goes down to that property. So I don't have to go scrolling around looking for it. Double click on that. And then I can just select the file. In this case, CSS. And it's Landmarks Custom CSS. So let's go ahead and open that up. And now every time this component loads, that CSS will load with it and I can use those CSS classes within this component and that's what I want to do to clean up the uh, the list control a little bit so if we uh, let's go back to controls and we'll take a look at uh, working preview once again to look at our list and let's see what we have so we can see there's some alignment issues here this is probably because I put the the float right ahead of um, of the name so it's not floating properly and that's all going to be addressed in the CSS style class and then also this chevron is the wrong color it should be um, a gray and this text shouldn't be as as bold as it is so again by using a CSS class we can solve this very very easily let's go back to design here let me go back into the web projects control panel let's take a look at the CSS file so you can study this file and see what kind of changes I made. But the first change we're going to use is this class, Landmarks List Text. And you can see there's a float left that assigns the font size, alignment, color, and so on. So let's go ahead and I just close that up and back into the, uh, into the builder. Now, let's go into Landmarks, into our list properties we're going to go into the list layout and this is where we're going to make some changes so right now here's our name placeholder and we're going to get rid of this whole class right here because we want to assign a new class we want to assign um, the class of land landmarks list text to that div uh, that will straighten up the um, the alignment there and the other thing I want to do is I want to use a different image I don't want to use this default image here so I'll leave that there for now go, go and insert image and we want to use an SVG icon and we can select and this is a whole list of SVG icons that is built into uh, alpha and the one that we're looking for is a chevron. Uh, we could run the filter here, but I see it right away. It's right here. That's the one I want to use, the chevron right large. So I'm going to click on that. And the fill color, I want to change that to a gray. And I've defined a, a gray here in my palette, but you can pick anything you'd like. And now that's, yeah, that looks good. Let's click on OK. OK. And now that will be inserted into our template. And then we can go ahead and just get rid of the previous entry and click on OK. And take a look in working preview. Let's see what we have. Does this look better? And it does. So this is the, the disclosure looks right. The text looks right. It's aligned properly. So this is good. We're happy with that. And we're going to save it. 
So the next thing we need to tackle is the detail view. And what we want to do is when we when we click on a row, now it just highlights it. It doesn't do anything. We want to bring up a detail view, and the detail view has an image, a circular image, a map, and some further information about the landmark. And we can see that if we take a look in the uh, in the Swift UI application over here, we can see the behavior we're going for. So we, we tap on a row, and it brings up essentially another panel uh, with a, a back button. In this case, this says landmarks. It has, uh, and then we've got the title of the landmark here. We've got an image. We've got a map uh, that is probably centered on the lat long that we have in our data list. And so this changes for every row that we tap on uh, and includes some information about the park down here and its location. Of course, this information that's now in the JSON data is just filler text, but you get the idea. Um, so again, we tap on the row. We want to bring up a view that has a map, that has some information, that has an image. And, and ultimately, we want to control that when you, or you tap on the star, that uh, it changes from a favorite to now uh, to a non-favorite, and we'll we'll get to all of that. So let's go ahead and move that out of the way. Okay. So when we think about it, what we need is in our detail view, we definitely need a map, we need a picture, a circular picture centered uh, on the. Uh, it's pretty much centered on the map. Or the border there and then some information uh, about the park so i'll click on design and we'll go back to our uh, details panel card and the first thing we're going to do is change the property for the style we don't need this this background color is just uh, so that we can see something going on right okay also in properties um, body can scroll is checked and the scroll axis is going to be vertical. Uh, the other thing that we'd, we'd like on this panel card is we'd like this panel card to scroll to the top on focus so that every time you, uh, the user were to pick a new landmark that this panel card would come to the top and the map would be at the top and so on. So we want that behavior. We set that in these uh, properties here. Next, I'm going to add a panel card header here, right-clicking on the Details panel card, select Panel Header. And this time, yes, we do want to include a control bar in the panel header. I'll say yes. Now, I'm going to click on the control bar, and we're going to click on the control bar properties here to edit it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a button that uh, will navigate back to the landmarks um, panel card uh, when it's clicked. So what we do is go into items and we want to add a control bar item and we want to add a button. So and that is the default, but we'll just change the name here so that this is back button. And if make button text uh, same as item name is checked, you can uncheck that and make default action leave that checked and say okay uh, now what we want to do you'll notice that there's an action here called back button on click and we're going to add some javascript that uh, will be will be associated with that click event but what i want you to do now is just go into the sub theme here and we'll set this to into the left sub theme so that's going to give us the uh uh, left pointing chevron and then the text so we, we'll just get that as part of the theme so you can leave this as text only it doesn't really matter because we've specified the, the theme here and then the button text by default here says button we want it to say we'll just have it say back and we're at that point we're done with this items so now let's go look at actions so here is our action and and this JavaScript was automatically generated. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because we don't need it. And what we're going to do 
is we're going to insert some JavaScript and we're going to call a method. And we're going to call a method of the uh, component object. And you'll see this uh, shortcut called it's it's um, it's it's a template holder dialog object that is referencing and will be filled in with the component object uh, name. But uh, you'll see that used throughout Alpha. And what we want to do is we want to call a method to navigate to a certain panel. So if, if we just type in pan, it, go down to the filter and just type in panel. Um, set, you'll see panel set active. So this is the method that we want, and we can just click on insert. So that comes on in, and then from here, just get rid of these placeholders here, and you can just go ahead and delete that and insert a space, and then this help will pop up. You can just right-click on the UX panel name, and, and up pops a list of, of uh, panels that we might want to navigate to, and we want to navigate to the landmarks. A panel card so uh, that's the one we're going to select and we want to animate it into uh, into view and that is just true so that's the JavaScript we want to use and we'll use something very similar to this uh, in another place in this component but just uh, get used to using the methods of the uh, essentially the component uh, and because there's a lot here and it can be very helpful for you okay so uh, let's just say okay with that Oh, I actually wanted to uh, look at some other things here. Sorry. So let's go into the control bar layout and verify that we've got that set up right. And yes, we see the uh, back button is in the before um, tab here. So um, this allows us to easily place things on that control bar and on the left side, the middle, and the right side, and so on. So right now we've just got this back button there and that's that's all we need for right now let's go ahead and say okay uh, that looks good so our control bar right now is set up the way i'd like it and what i'm going to do now is we're going to add remember we need a, a google map so let's go to data controls and we'll just find the map and we'll just insert a map and label we don't want to label make sure that's set to none and you can just use the defaults there that's fine next thing that we'd like to add is an image so there's an image that will be below the map again it's going to be a data bound image so we're going to pick the data bound image and we're going to make sure the label position is none you can leave the default value of image one say okay that's going to come in and the next thing I want to add is a freeform HTML area that I can just enter in some HTML. We'll be using placeholders when we do it. But if you jump into containers here, and we're going to enter in a freeform layout, and you can leave it uh, labeled as such. I'm going to come up to the properties here, and for the HTML, I'm just going to enter the word about. Just something there so we can see it uh, we'll be adding uh, placeholders in here a little bit later on so let's say okay so at this point we've got this details panel card kind of set up the way we we might want it and from here in order to populate these controls with some information from the list go back to the list so i'll click on the list and we're going to come into the list properties and click on those properties tab here and click on has detail view it's right here um, once you click on that you'll see another tab appears up top and that is the detail view uh, tab so let's click on that um, auto commit detail view on row select uncheck that because we're going to handle that through some code uh, and i don't want to actually auto commit the data and above it is the detail view field map so here we want to map uh, the, the controls to the data that we have so for example we want to map the coordinates to the map so that's done and the next thing we want to do is map the image to the image uh, control so there we go 
and that should be fine. So now we've got the detail view data mapped to the detail view from the list control. And the one thing that we need to do now is to say, okay, when you click on a list, bring up the detail view. So that's going to be in our list properties. And you can search for um, it's on select. So in on select, we're going to add some JavaScript, find that property, and we can just double click on that to bring up the editor. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the back button. So we're going to insert a method. It's going to be the panel set active. We're going to insert that and what we're going to do here is we're going to set a different panel active when you click on the row so we'll hit the space we'll right click on the ux panel name we're going to bring up the details panel card and then we're going to just say yeah go ahead and animate that in um, and that should do it so let's see what we have now so let's go ahead and first off let's save what we have And let's take a look at uh, working preview. Actually, before I do that, let me make sure I've set something. On this map control, I want to set the width to 100%. And I'm going to set the map height to 300 pixels. Uh, map is draggable is checked. That's good. And let's see, I want to make sure that prevent scroll is checked and it is by default. On the image, let's go to the image control. I'm going to want to set the width on this as well. So I'm going to set the width to 100% so that it will fill the panel card. Uh, then I should be all set, right? So let's go ahead and save again. And let's now hit working preview. And I believe this should behave the way we'd like. We're getting close to it. I'll click on that row. Yep, and we can see the map. It's been centered on the lat lawn. Uh, we can see our image down here. We can see the about text in our HTML area. Now, this isn't styled the way we'd like it. You know, it's not circular, the drop shadow and all that stuff. And it's not positioned the way we'd like it. But we can see that we've got we've got something going here and this is we're getting close so um, yeah, we can go between the different items and we can see that uh, the, the appropriate data is is being presented and so on so um, so from here we'll now go ahead and and add some more placeholders in the HTML uh, freeform area and we'll start uh, styling this the way we'd like Okay, now that we have all these changes, I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, component so that we've got a, another a backup, essentially, with a, a known good state here. So you can also just click on File and Save As. In this case, we're going to uh, use uh, Landmarks Phase, and we'll just change this to 2, and go ahead and save it. Now, when you do that, this component is now called Landmarks Phase 2, and that's not the one I want to be editing right now. So let's just go ahead and close it. We can see it here. And we'll just open the Landmarks component up again. Now what we want to do is we want to add, uh, we want to make the image uh, circular so that when we display that image, uh, it's circular and it's got a border and a drop shadow and it's centered on the map vertically uh, and uh, horizontally. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Um, click on the image control. And what we're going to do is click on advanced image display options. Click on that. And make sure crop image is checked and the type we want is circle the size we want here is 200 and let's see what else everything else looks okay a uh, vertical offset so what we want to do is we want this thing to float above the uh, the map and 
the, the vertical offset is going to be minus 1, 1, uh, 10. Um, you don't need to enter in px here. In fact, if you do, it will it will cause it to fail. So uh, pixels is assumed. Uh, image floats will to allow this control to float up above the uh, the Google Map. And click on OK. And at this point, um, the image should be uh, all set up. Let's go look at working preview here. Go ahead and we'll tap on a row. And sure enough, it's starting to look pretty good. You can see we've got some, uh, some things that, that we need to do with the... Uh, uh, freeform HTML area. We want to display some more uh, landmark information in there. But uh, yeah, as we go through the different um, list items and landmarks, we can see the uh, the image looks good. It's centered. It's it's uh, looking sharp. So next, we'll go on and update the uh, HTML controls. Okay, moving on, we're going to modify the freeform HTML area that just says about right now. And let's take a look at what we want to do. So we'll look at the Swift UI application. And this is the way the detail view looks. So we've, we can see we've got, uh, this is the name of the landmark. Then there's a star, and we'll be adding that in at a later time uh, that allows you to denote a, a favorite. Uh, then there's, uh, this is the park, the park name, as opposed to the landmark name. So this is the park, and this is the state, and then there's this line here, and then about, again, the same name. So it's the, it's the landmark name, so about the landmark name, and then we see this descriptive text that's placeholder text in the uh, in the JSON. So we know what we need to do. We've got uh, the name used a couple of times. We have the park name, we've got the state, and then we've got the description. Move that out of the way. Double click on the freeform control. We'll get rid of this about here. And I'm going to paste in the text that I used for this template. And I'll go through it and explain it. So everything is wrapped into a class called Summary Content. And if we go look at the Landmarks Custom CSS, hold on, let me just close that out and we'll do that. Uh, and you'll see in here Summary Content has a margin set up and padding and so on. So all of the different classes that you'll see me using are defined in Landmarks underbar custom.css. And you can take a look at that. And, uh, and study, you know, exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing the different things that I'm doing. So let's go back into uh, that builder. And what we've done is uh, there's a, a wrapper class, and then this is a class for the summary title. And, and notice I'm using Landmark's name, and I'm using it here, and I'm using it here in the About. Uh, the way that you enter these placeholders in is very simple. You just go to insert list field, you pick the list and you want the name, and there you can see the uh, the template drops in. And so this is the same for the park and the state and uh, the description. Uh, the, the, the thing to note in here that's kind of cool is this gray text, uh, that represents, let me just show you that quick. That gray text is going to represent the park name and the state. And you notice the alignment here, right? So uh, one is is uh, floats over to the left and one floats to the right. And then we also have to control the size of this so that, uh, you know, the, that this doesn't flow down to another line and underneath this line. So I'll show you how I did that. It was really kind of neat and all handled in CSS. Because you can see here, I've just got two spans. One with a line left and one with a line right. Let's just say OK on that. And come back in here, and you can see, so a line left floats left, and then I set the width to 75%. So that will actually make a column right there, and then a line right just floats right. And gray text, which you're seeing, is just denoting the color of the text and the font size. 
So this is really nice to be able to just tweak this stuff, and you can and you can tweak this as you're building these kind of components, uh, make changes to the CSS, save them, and uh, it makes it really pretty easy uh, to do these things. So um, I'm going to go back in and uh, we'll take a look at that and make sure that all looks right, and it does. And so from here, oh, I wanted to. I go back in here and I just want to point out one more thing and that is this div right here which you might not know what what is that doing well what it's doing there is it's going to clear out the floats so that's what it does uh, otherwise the text would continue to uh, say float right um, because we're using that as our last float here so and then we've got the HR, which is um, uh, a horizontal rule, that'll give us the line. All right, so let's go ahead and now take a look at that in working preview. I'll click on the row, bring it up. Yep, here we can see, and here you can see that column that I was telling you about. You know, it's consuming about 75% is what I'm allowing for that. And, uh, and then Alaska, the state aligns over on the right hand side so that's exactly what we wanted there and this looks good and we'll just go click on another uh, park and bring that up and again we can see that same uh, that's so that's worked out really well just a little minor CSS and uh, we have the essentially the columns that we'd like and, uh, and, it, and it all looks good so the next thing we need to do is to add the, the star in and that needs to be a control that does something so when we tap on it it's going to set uh, and and designate that landmark as a favorite okay next uh, we want to add a star to the freeform area so that when the user taps on it it denotes a favorite let's take a look at the behavior in the native swift application so that's over here and what we want to do is when you use taps on a row they can select this star then it turns gold and when they go back it's now one of the favorites so i tap on it again the state is maintained it's a favorite if i click on it again it's no longer a favorite i'll come back here and it's no longer a favorite turtle rock will do the same thing turn it off come back and it's no longer a favorite. Okay, to do that, the first thing we're going to do is add a control into our details panel card. And we're going to do it right below this image one. Um, and this time I'm going to tap on the add control. This is a nice little shortcut to know about. And in this case, we want a checkbox. So if you just type in check, and we're going to select a logical checkbox and you can leave that name logical checkbox one is fine we don't need a label and let's click on OK and that comes in now we need to set some properties for this logical checkbox uh, the first thing is what type of, uh, of control is this what kind of checkbox well it's a logical it's either going to be true or false in our case our JSON data is indicates true or false um, the next thing that uh, I want to do is go to control properties. In control properties, we're going to want to set what is the checked image, what is the unchecked image, um, and what are the sizes and so on. So uh, this color here, we can we're going to specify that, so don't even worry about that. Um, we're going to actually for a gold colored star, we're going to enter in a, a hex value there. So let me just uh, take care of that and. And in here, don't want the check. Uh, want uh, a, in our case, we want a star. So we'll filter it on star. And we can see we want a filled star. And in our case, I'd like to have, um, well, let's say it's going to be uh, 24 pixels is actually pretty good. We'll leave that. And the fill color, I'm going to make that fill color. Uh, it's hex FFD 300 and say OK. And that's going to be our fill color for that. Uh, that is fine. And now that's OK. And for the unchecked image, we're going to do something similar. We're going to go filter on star. We're going to fill, 
get pick the unfilled star this time. We'll leave that 24 pixel size. In this case, we want the stroke color. Black is fine, so we'll leave the stroke color to black, and that should be all set. So there you go. And for our checked value, what we're going to use is a JavaScript true. So otherwise, it's going to treat this value as a string. So in our case, we don't want that. We want the real JavaScript true. And the unchecked value is going to be JavaScript false. And uh, this image size has been overridden, so it's because we specified it right directly in the um, selection for the SVG files. So we'll say OK. So now we've identified this, uh, this logical checkbox. And you'll notice it's in our display hierarchy here. We don't really want it to display here because we want it to display in the free form area. And the way you do that is you hide it. So you turn hide on here. Now it won't, um, it, we're not going to see it in, in the uh, hierarchy of this display here. And now we'll go into the freeform area now and double click on that. And notice that the placeholder logical checkbox now appears. And we want that check, we want that um, to appear right next to the name. So you can just double click on that and that will appear now right next to the name. So that's what we want to do there. And the next thing we need to do is map the data from the list control to that logical checkbox. And in order to do that, just double click on the landmarks list. And we're going to go to the detail view. And we're going to go to the detail view map. And in this case, we're going to pick uh, is favorite, and we're going to map that field to this logical checkbox. Okay, that should make some sense because now we're mapping the data to that control, and this is now going to uh, reflect the state of that, and we'll, it will also modify is favorite. So that that should all make some sense. Uh, and let's see customization here. Um, let's see. Set indicator on in, on edited rows. We want to turn that off, and uh, I'll exp that that is uh, an indicator that's in the list control, and I don't want to see that because we're going to just strictly update the uh, the value of the star. So that's all we need when uh, when a change is made there. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is we want to commit the data. So in the the user makes a change and they check on the checkbox. When panel when this details panel card, um, when we lose focus on that and we move back to the landmarks panel card, we want to make a commit of the data. So in order to do that, we have to uh, we have to use some JavaScript. Okay. So right now we need to what I did was I've included the JavaScript for this component in a file. And there's a lot of ways you can actually share JavaScript in files, but I'm going to show you an easy way of doing this. We're going to come into the JavaScript functions, and I'm going to click this little book thing, and it's a code library. And what we're going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is create a new library. So go down to Menu and say I want to create a new um, library. And this will just be like, my JavaScript. You can call it anything you want. So this is just your, a library of stuff that you might want to use. Say OK. And then you want to add something. If you have something on the clipboard, which I did, uh, it's going to show up. You don't even need to worry about that. Just click Load from File. And the JavaScript, let's show you where it is. So in the, in the tutorials, in the web project, um, and this is the project we're playing around with in JS is uh, Landmarks JS. So just double click on that and then the Landmarks uh, JavaScript will come in. Just say OK. 
and this is actually the first line of code so it says landmarks app supporting js that's okay good enough and now all i have to do is just um, double click on it and it will include that javascript uh, in the component so that's saved um, and any component i use uh, in in this installation of alpha now i can access these functions so that's kind of a nice way of building up a library of functions that you might end up using. So this is the function we're going to be calling. It's commit data. And ultimately what this does is it's going to update the list object uh, from the UX controls that have been mapped. And that's what this code does. Okay. So now go back to controls. And uh, I want to go to the back button that's in the control bar. So in the control bar properties, I want to go to actions. When the back button on click is fired, we now want to call the commit data function that we just added. And that should now be all set. So, if we were to take a look at this in a working preview, let's see what we've got. If I click on Turtle Rock, and I should see that it's a star is there. Notice I can now click on the star, and now it's not filled. Go back, and it's not filled here. I'll go to Silver Salmon Creek. Come on down. We'll make it a favorite. Go on back. And now it's a favorite. So we've got the behavior, the exact behavior we were looking for. Next, we'll add the is favorite filter. Okay, next we're going to add the favorites button. So let's take a look at the Swift UI application and just look at this behavior. So you can see the uh, the label is here, and there is a light gray line up above and below sort of framing the switch and then of course the switch which toggles the favorites but also notice that the the uh, favorites button is part of the list it's not in the say panel card header it's actually in the list and as the list scrolls up it scrolls up with it so that's the behavior that we're going to be looking for so let's talk about how to do that. So the first thing uh, that we need to do is we're going to uh, we're going to be putting uh, the control, so the switch control, uh, inside a row in the list. So the way to do that is come down to um, the end of the panel navigator, and we're going to have to create what's called injectable content. And so we're going to come down to containers, select a container, and select injectable content. And we're going to insert after. So you'll notice that this is after the, um, the panel navigator. And um, this is not going to be displayed in the view hierarchy. So that's why we can include the container where it is. Uh, and inside this container, this is where we're going to put the uh, the switch. And then we can include this injectable container within the list. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another container because I want to want to frame this. And I'm going to insert after. And the reason that we're going to do this is for those uh, light gray uh, top and bottom border uh, that we saw that were, that were framing the switch. So I'm going to set the container width to 100%. I'm going to set, and here I'm just going to use an inline style. I could use a class, but uh, sometimes it's just as easy to use a, um, an inline style. So in this case, so we'll say container style, and we can just go down to uh, borders. So we can say, okay, our top style is going to be, oh, I got to click on this, um, is going to be solid. And the width is going to be one pixel. And the color, let's go select the color. It's going to be that light gray. 
and say OK. And so that's our top style. And then th we're going to do the same thing for the bottom. So let's go find bottom style here. There we go. Uh, so we're going to have solid. We're going to have uh, one pixel. And our bottom color is going to be that gray as well. OK. So that's going to establish those uh, those lines that we saw. And then let's now include a switch. So I'm going to say add control and just filter on switch. So just type in switch and there you go. OK. And switch one is fine. In this case, we're going to want to use a label. Um, and so I've got um, the label set, uh, always make control label, same as the name, doesn't have to be. We can set this, so we'll, we'll, we can go ahead and set that um, once we get into the builder. So I just click on OK. And that includes our switch. Now, let's see. Um, I'm going to want to set the switch width here at 55 pixels. I just know this from experimentation. And I've defined a, a, um, a sub-theme called small. And I just this is a, a, a switch that I designed that's a derivative of, of the original base switch. And it's been included as a style tweak. Um, I just like the sizing a little bit better. So that was just something I did on my own. Uh, but it's included in this project. So uh, that's good. Our control container width here needs to be set at 100% as well. And our label. We want the label to say, um, we want to say favorites only. Favorites only. We're going to assign this to a class because I've defined a class for the styling on the label just to make sure the text is the right size and so on. So click on class. And if you scroll down, we'll find a favorites labels label text class hit the plus sign so now we're assigning that class to that and just say okay so that's fine uh, on the width what we want to do this is for the label width and just set this up at 250 250 pixels um, and that will be fine so that it does it that we don't end up with um, a two row string if you will so favorites only and all of that looks just fine okay so that's our injectable uh container that we're going to have to now include in the landmarks list so now go up to the list the landmarks list and into list properties right here click on that tab and where it says has data header i'm going to check that and for the header html i'm going to click on this link that says insert content from an injectable container and there's our injectable container and you know, this is a placeholder for that container so that should be fine so let's say okay um say okay and let's just look quickly at what do we have. So let's click on Working Preview. Let's see what we've got. And sure enough, here's our label, and here's our control. And our control is is working. It's not doing anything yet, but it's it's doing the job, and it is scrolling with the list. So we've got the uh, the look that we're looking for here, and now we just have to wire in. Um, the JavaScript. I'll go back to design and on the switch itself. So we'll go back down to the switch. And now what we want to do is assign the JavaScript that's going to um, fire on the on select event. And notice in the help, which is down here, that this will return a value of this dot value. So we can use that to determine is that switch on or is it off. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So, so I'm going to click on this and bring up the JavaScript editor. And I, I'm just going to paste in the JavaScript so I don't have to type it. 
Um, but so what we're saying here is if this value equals on, then call filter list. Otherwise, call clear filter list. And these are um, functions, JavaScript functions that have been defined uh, in our JavaScript functions. So let's go take a look at what that is. I'm going to go ahead and save this component now. We've almost got it completely finished. Let's go back into JavaScript functions. And uh, here we have got filter list and, and clear filter list. So here's our filter list function. Um, we get a pointer to the list object, and then we set the filter to this uh, regular expression. And the clear list filter uh, just sets it to false. So those are the two functions that we're, that we're calling. So let's go ahead and, uh, and then take a look at that. Let's go back to working preview and see what we've got. So now when I toggle it, you'll see that the list is being filtered. If I, let's say, go in here oh, and I change this to a favorite, go back and then filter it on my favorites. So there we can see I've got those, those four. So we've got, we've got all of the, the functionality that we're looking for, and we're almost done with this, but we can make it even better. Let's take a look at the iOS application and uh, just take a look at some of the behavior. So when I tap on a row, notice that the landmark name appears in the uh, panel card header. This will be our control bar in our component. And notice that the button here says landmarks. Now when I tap on that and now select Silver Salmon Creek, notice that this button has changed to back. And the reason is because this name may overcome, if this were landmarks, it would overcome it. And based on the size of the uh, display on the device, this is going to automatically adjust. It's this kind of polish that iOS uh, apps have, and it's what uh, users really expect to see in an application. So let's see if we can tackle that in our Alpha Anywhere application. Now, to add the landmark name to the control bar in the uh, details panel card, we can use templating to do that. So I'll double click on the control bar and we, we can go to items and we're going to add a control bar item. Oh, and this is just some HTML, so we could go with the default HTML1 tag. And we can certainly remember that. And for our HTML text, I'm going to create a, a div. Let me paste this in so I don't have to type it all out. But the div ID is going to be landmark name header and the class is landmark name header so this is going to control our styling and this id is going to be important when i ask uh, the browser how much space does this name actually take up and notice here i've used a placeholder list landmarks name i did that by doing insert list field landmarks name and if you do that that'll just drop that right in we don't need it in two places so that looks good Click on OK. And the next thing we need to do is add this HTML to our control bar layout. So go to the control bar layout tab and we're going to edit this line. And in the middle, we're going to add, uh, and notice we've got this HTML1. So we'll just go ahead and add that. That's going to have our landmark name. I'm going to say OK. That looks good. OK there. And now we can. Uh, Click on Working Preview, and we'll tap on Turtle Rock, and sure enough, we see Turtle Rock up there. Go back, the Silver Salmon Creek, go back. So this is all working the way we would expect. Now, the next thing we're going to tackle is this Back button, so that it sometimes will say Landmarks, and other times we'll say Back, based on the size of the landmark name. So to do that, we're going to do go back to uh, design and we're going to click on the double click on the control bar again click on the uh, data tab and we're going to add a data item and in this case we're going to call this back button text and I'm going to check update value automatically based on a watch event so here we want to 
pick a control that's going to change when the detail view comes into view. Well, the image is always going to change, so that's a good one to check for this particular case. And what it means is, watch this image. When it changes, run this JavaScript. And the JavaScript that we're going to run right now is return set back button text. And this function is defined in our JavaScript function. So we'll take a look at that after we see what it does. Next, I need to modify the back button in items. So I come into the back button and instead of the back button text being back, we're going to change that and we're going to use a placeholder back button text. So we'll just insert that and we'll get rid of back. So the result of of the set back button text function is going to be returned in this placeholder. So that's what we're going to see. So let's say OK there. And um, our control bar layout is already fine because it has the back button in it. So now we should be good to go. So let's go take a look at what it's going to do. So in working preview, I'll click on Turtle Rock and it says back back I'll click on Silver Salmon Creek and it says back and I'll click on Chilcook Trail and it says back well is it ever going to say something other than back let's try Icy Bay oh see Icy Bay fits because landmarks doesn't overcome Icy Bay so this is working exactly the way we would expect it to notice it says back here and so it's only on that short name that can, it can say landmarks with an iPhone 4 uh, layout. So let's try a different layout. So this time we'll go to an iPhone 6 vertical and go back. And let's try um, one of the longer names. And notice now, oh, it works for Charlie Rivers. It works for uh, Lake McDonald. It's close, but it works. Um, we might want to adjust our math there a little bit, but it's close. Uh, Twin Lake works. Will anything overcome it here? Um, yeah, Silver Salmon Creek, the longest name, is now showing back. So this behavior, this is this is real polish, and this is exactly what an iOS user expects to see. So let's go take a look at the function, uh, set back button text, and see what it does. Go back to design, go into JavaScript functions, and here's our set back button text and what I'm doing here is I'm uh, looking at the div landmark name header and I'm computing the size uh, with window get computed style getting the width of that um, in with this call right here so this is really the key like how much space will that string take up with that font and that style and so on and this little magical uh, uh, it's a function of the DOM, uh, gets me all that information. And then from there, it's just some math to figure out, okay, well, what size is it and is it going to fit? And if it's, you know, if it's certain size, return the button text of landmarks, otherwise return the button text of back. I'll leave that for you to uh, look at, but, uh, but that's what's going on there. So this is great. We've accomplished uh, everything we want. And there's one more thing we can do to really add some polish to this app. Let's take a look at this iOS application and just watch what happens with landmarks as I tap on a row. Notice how it animates in position and size. So it morphs into like the back button. That is just, just a really cool look. And it's something that we can come pretty close to doing in the alpha application. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so in the static text control I'm going to add a class to this and the class we're going to add is going to be title text click on this plus button to add it and that's okay now next because what we want to do is we want to animate something into position uh, when the user taps on a row in landmark and brings up the detail view and then when the user taps on the back button in the detail view we want to sort of reverse that animation so let's go into landmarks 
in the list properties. And under list properties here, uh, we're going to go and we can search for on select. On select. There we go. Find that property. And let's modify that. So instead of calling this details panel card and setting the panel active, I'm going to change that. I'm going to use a JavaScript function here. And the JavaScript function that we're going to call is show details panel card. Okay. And click on OK here. And then in the back button, so the back button in this control bar, under actions, I'm going to modify this. So we'll remove this panel set active and we'll call show landmarks panel card. Now let's take a look at the effect. When I tap on the row, look closely at the landmarks title here, and it will animate up into the corner, and the size will change. When I come back, it animates back down. So it's a cool little effect that was really pretty easy to add in, and just adds a little bit more pop to the application. So let's take a look at the JavaScript that's running there. In JavaScript functions, these are my two functions that I'm calling. Show Landmarks Panel Card and Show Details Panel Card. So in Show Landmarks, I'm getting a pointer to the title text. And then notice what I'm doing here. I'm removing a class called Move. And that's when I go to show the landmarks panel card. And when I go to show the details panel card, I add that class move into it before I show the, the panel card. And I have a little delay here. So I've got a, a 125 millisecond delay to let that animation show a little bit. Let's go look at the CSS that's involved with that. Scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see here is our title text class, and you'll see the transform and the transition. So we're setting a half second ease in, the ease out transition, and we're translating to the zero, zero point. And then when we add the move class, we move the, uh, the text minus 30 pixels in the y direction. So that's bringing it up, and our scale is going down. 2.25. So it's these two, and we're also modifying the opacity. So all of this happens when we transition to the details panel card, and all of this happens when we come back to the landmarks panel card. So that's a nice little trick to know about and pretty easy to implement with a couple of lines of CSS. It's really quite nice. So that wraps up this uh, tutorial on chapter one of using uh, Alpha to build a, an application that's very, very similar to an iOS uh, application built with Swift UI. Right now, this is a, uh, an HTML5 application that could be installed on a device in a browser, but it could also be converted to a Cordova app and installed directly onto a device, say through the App Store. Uh, we'll, get, we'll show you how to do that in future tutorials. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to uh, follow the links that will be listed in the video comments. Thanks so much.